Burn Unit with your host, the amazing Jonathan. Hi, this is the amazing Jonathan. Welcome to Burn Unit. We have a very, very special show tonight. We have the most sought after magician, I would say, in the world when it comes to magic and lecturing. Nobody, nobody doesn't want Jeff McBride. Nobody <laughs> doesn't want that should be your motto. That nobody nobody doesn't, doesn't want Jeff every, McBride. Everybody doesn't like something, but nobody but doesn't like want, Jeff McBride. Oh, it's been used already. Oh, okay. Shoot. By know. Sarah Lee, I, I think. I thought I'd made it up. Well, thanks for the compliment. No, I it's don't? it's it's the truth. Uh Jeff and I first met, I know where we first met. First Atlantic time City. Seen. Atlantic City, oh, I think I was, was you were at resorts. You were at resorts. You were doing stuff at resorts for for Mer. Our next Ooh. entertainer is a, a comic and a, a magician. Uh, Ooh, you have a big head. Jonathan. Yes. You're going places. That's yeah. what he used to tell me. You have a big head. Yeah, big showbiz yeah. head. Like a like big a, heads. Like Ooh. a Clint Eastwood head. He was the best. He's like he, a bobblehead. Yeah, Merv Griffin was probably the most fun I've ever j had in my life. I would actually look forward. To <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, Just getting Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> me, <laughs> Exciting time. Me and Danny Ontario would buy for... You remember Danny Ontario? No, I don't. The, the host of the dance show, the, the disco dance show for years and years? Merv, 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 that was Merv's show. Well. Danny Ontario, what was the name of the show that he hosted? Uh, <laughs> oh, that wasn't a buzzer. Um, Danny Terrio. That's who I'm talking Danny about. Danny Terrio, but you yes. said Danny Ontario. Ontario. Yeah, I thought no, no, no. Was Danny that's Terrio. The guy from Canada. Yeah, yeah. Danny yeah. Terrio. We remember right. that. Yeah, Merv used to tell me great stories about that. That was 80s stuff. I thought I first met you at World's Greatest Magic. I, no, I, no, 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 no. Do you remember when we set up in those little squares on the cement they had us? And I remember you wandering over to my square. I mean, I think you and I were the only ones who didn't have big illusions. Of yeah, because we're talent guys. Yeah. We don't need that we crap. Don't need that. He needs that. cards. Yeah. I need my wit. And together, yeah. we're, we're cards and wit. <laughs> cards and wit. Hi, I'm cards. He's wit. wit. We're card and wit. Yeah. Well, we used to be a cruise ship act. We'd killed. No, but, but uh, you were dead in Atlantic City, and I and I saw you in a, in a show down there, and you were you were really rocking and rolling. You were really... You know, I was hot back then. You were hot. You yeah. were very hot back yeah. then. Yeah, Red Hot and Rowdy was the name of the show. And I saw you, I believe, what was that comedy club in New York City named after the woman? Caroline's? Caroline's. He's, he's, Caroline's. He's been sneaking into venues. Yeah, during the <laughs> 80s. Yeah. Don't laugh, Bizarro. You were obsessed too when you were a kid. So yeah, that's where I got my start, kind of in New York City and then I talked Atlantic to your City. I talked to Bizarro's parents. Yeah? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Do you know Bizarro? Bizarro's great. He's one of our favorites at Wonderground. Yeah. He is absolutely great. And uh, I, I I think he's one of the most creative magicians too. out there. I do too. It's, it's, I love, it's a love shame. his invention. It's a shame that he has to live like he lives, with a mind like <laughs> <laughs> Why do great artists always live in, like, they live in, in, in they never, like Danny Sylvester, the, the, most, the most genius of acts, lives in a hovel. Yeah. A little garage. You could put $2 million in his pocket. He would still live in a garage. He's not in it for the money. He's in it for the creativity. And then so are you. But you, you, you have a, you have a very safe medium where you have the money and you have the talent. You see, <laughs> I've that's, been very that's, blessed. What yeah, can I say? you've been blessed. You practice. Yeah. <laughs> Why give credit to that guy when it's you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I practice. You hold you hold several world's records. You practice so much. I do. I, I would get a world's record in guy most likely not to practice. What's the, which is the good camera to shoot cards at? Um, uh, the one with the girl behind it. Oh, perfect! You nailed it. I you nailed, nailed the it. lens of the camera. I did, and that one oh, too. Oh, 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 oh. Go over more. Let me help you. Let me help okay. you. I'll push you over. <laughs> They're all to the left. I'm going over. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's what I do. That's I got the world's record, the Guinness World Record, in that years ago. For yeah. for what is the actual speed. title? Speed. Speed. I should have the world's speed. record for that. <laughs> The night is young. Here, have a card. <laughs> tip, 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 tip. <laughs> These are Jeff McBride's own playing cards. He doesn't pick up a like a bicycle deck and go. I, he has his own cards. That's right. So that when people pick up the cards for him, mm -hmm. they got it's a business card, isn't it? Yes. Unless it's got your phone number on it. No, it has my website on it. Good enough. Yep. That's thinking. That's See? why I throw them out. It, little thing, it's little things like that. It's kept me out of the big time. Uh huh. So Jeff. 
Tell me about like your work week. I, every time I, you go all over the world every week. You are, I was, you are in, all like, last year I was on the road with uh, The Illusionist Show, which is one of the top grossing shows in the world it's right now. It's a huge show. Uh, the, so I was on the road with The Illusionist doing Mexico and all over South America. That was most of last year. But I spend about maybe half the year in Vegas and about half the year touring. Yeah. yeah but I'm only here half the time. And then do I come back Do you like just traveling still? Do you like going around? I love it. You do? Uh, yeah, I do. I do. I when, love seeing when the world. But when you fly, you go first class, right? Oh, business got, class. Got, business class. Uh, that's what I do. I I'll do, do some tricks, class. maybe get upgraded to first because class. Because there's a difference between business class and the, the assholes that will spend the next 11000 for a first class. It's ticket. crazy, isn't it? I don't get it, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't get that at all. But I, I spend about half, you know, a lot of my life in an airplane. It's do you throw cards in airplanes? Do you ever, have no. you ever thrown cards in an airplane? No. You never have? No. Haven't you been tempted to get it down that tube? Haven't you got that long, narrow... It's yeah. made for that. No, I don't do a, I don't do that. I don't do that. I, I want to stay on the plane. I like keeping my passport. Yeah, they'll throw, they'll throw keep, you. Keeping my passport. I mean, I've had some weird encounters coming through customs with them searching me, and I I lost my passport once, and then I filed for got another passport and replacement. When I got to, uh, I was getting going into Monaco, and I had I reached in my bag and I found my old passport, and all of a sudden I had two passports. That's not good. And enough. they grabbed me. They said, "Do passport? Yes, <laughs> this is uh, not good. Uh, two passports. That's two passports. That's Do passport. Oh, you, you know this part. Thank yeah. you. And they br brought me in the little room, ready to search me, and they went, "Why to pourquoi? Two passports? Pourquoi? Is Why? It, yeah. Why two passports? Yeah. And I said, "I'm a magician." They went, "Oh." Magician! Oh, the passports magician! And they handed me the two passports back. <laughs> what? I swear. And they handed me it. both passports. And my manager at the time was Tennessee Williams' manager. His name was Bill Barnes. He said, Jeff, uh, 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 only international jewel thieves have two passports. What are you doing with two passports? I said, I'm just an idiot and I forgot. And I reached in the little pocket and there was the old passport. But they let me right through. It's strange when you say you're a magician. It's like people yeah. let you pass through customs. Yeah, the, the international jewel thief doesn't have that kind of sway, does it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with hollow I mean, shoes. How do you say, when I get in that little room, it's not... Two passports, it's the two fingers together. <laughs> and, uh, all right, you hit that horse three times in a row, I'll give you $20. Look how big that horse is on top of the television. That's, that's, a, that's a pretty big horse. Yeah, hit that's it three a, times with three, three cards, $20. This, this, is, this is a challenge. This is, is a it? challenge. Is it not a challenge? Yeah, it's a bet. Okay. We're in Vegas. So can I stand My up? Little, can I stand up? Yes, you can. My Little Pony, three times. <laughs> My Little Pony, yeah. three times. Oh, two <laughs> Three, uh, okay. That was that wasn't it. That was you hit the TV the first time. <laughs> no, that's four. <laughs> but he'll never have children again. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you can now. Now that we're not betting, try to do it. And you'll, you'll, it's the pressure what of is money. This just it's the pressure of money. And watch this. Now there's okay. no money involved. One, One two. Oh. <laughs> One, two. <laughs> Die horse. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever have you ever heard anybody? I like the, the puppets are just awesome. I was just <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever heard anybody go, oh <laughs> like when you're doing that routine? <laughs> Has anybody no. taken it in the eye? No. Oh come no. on. No. Dude, you're throwing them pretty hard. If I, they no. were to hit But when I when I shoot them uh, in a show, I shoot them up and out and they kind of curve back. I don't target the audience. <laughs> There's nothing right. but eyes out $50. there. Fifty dollars. Okay. <laughs> if you okay. hit her three times in the face. No. <laughs> So what are the world's records do you hold? What are the world records? Uh, coin rolling uh, for eight coins for eight silver dollars. That is dollars. sickening because I, that just makes me sick because I try one and it's just like, duh. I learned from a guy named Presto, uh, Everett Johnson. It was this black street magician in Manhattan that did all these shows all up in Alaska. And What was he, his name? He, his name was Presto. Presto. Presto was his, his stage Did name. he have a beard? Yeah, he had a little beard, and he taught like this. I'm Presto the magician. And he spent a lot of time, I think it was, in jail. <laughs> <laughs> and he had a lot of time to practice, and you didn't drop a coin in jail because you didn't want to pick it up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you had to kick it all the way to yeah, yeah. Oakland. <laughs> right. So he didn't drop a whole lot, so he got pretty good at it. But he inspired me to, to, to uh, roll the coins. So yeah, the, but he couldn't do it unless he was in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's really hard to do, man. Mm -hmm. Jail really helps a lot of things when you're in jail. 
I know Tim Allen when he wasn't funny before he went, went to jail and he came out with a whole new act and, and got his show. Uh, really? He, yeah, serious. He he got busted for dealing coke and and I, I was with Tim Allen in Detroit at the time and he wasn't that funny and when he went, came out of jail, boy, he had a lot of time to sit there and write. So <laughs> I think it's good discipline. The army or jail is good. That's it, huh? Yeah. Wow. I would recommend the army though. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was. Uh, you ever just, been in jail? No, not, never. Not, probably after the show. Have you ever been arrested? Show. After the show, I mean, it could happen during the show. I want to find the, the seedy side of Jeff McBride. Have you ever? Have you ever been in a fight? Have I ever been into a fight? Yeah. Yes. I, I, why is the seedy side? I guess that I fascinates know. you. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. It brings it down. Have I been level. in fights? Yeah, that's why I studied martial arts as a kid. I used to get beat up a lot on the bus. Yeah. I used to get beat up on the bus by bullies. And then I started taking martial arts, and as soon as I took my first martial arts class, I never got bullied or harassed again. Well, that's not fun. That's always a story with karate. Ever since I've learned karate, I've never gotten a fight. Why? It's just now you know how to fight, and you can go out there and kick, and kick ass and look great. Right. And you don't because you got this inner peace. You yes. still, you, you probably still let yourself. Yeah, you would get pushed around before you throw a punch, wouldn't you? Yeah, but it's like I, I go into my inner peace. <laughs> yeah, thing. it's all right when you're just getting pushed around. <laughs> in your, when you're in your Zen state, you don't even know you're being pushed around. <laughs> but no. uh, yeah, I never, I never, I, I was able to ch chase down to a chain snatchers in New York, and it was like I lived in New York at the time where it was like Death Wish. The Warriors, New York. It was bad, New York. I lived in Hell's McBride, Kitchen. McBride, come I, out and play. play it. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That was the era I lived in. Yeah. I was there in the in the late seventies and all through the eighties. Yeah, I was there yeah. nineteen years in Manhattan in Hell's Kitchen, Fifty Second Street, Eighth Avenue. It was like one of the only neighborhoods you could go in. Like you could walk five blocks in any direction and never leave the scene of a crime. Yeah, you know. I remember that area. They had, they had shoot, don't shoot signs on the streets. Instead of walk, don't walk. Yeah. <laughs> I turned the corner and the cop said to me, he said, hey, are you carrying a weapon? I said, no. He goes, take my billy club. This is a dangerous <laughs> neighborhood. <laughs> I'm from Detroit, which is a nice town if you're a bullet. <laughs> <laughs> Detroit is Detroit. Detroit. Really yeah, bad. I was there. Wow, yeah. for a week with the Rockettes at that. Uh, what did they have? A Detroit, they have a, like a big theater Fox there. Which, theater. That yeah. was the theater I was in, that huge, yeah. big theater. There's a beautiful theater in the middle of like, yeah, it's squalor. just like everybody moved out. When did you move out of Detroit? Um, when I was uh, eighteen, did you have an act then? Yeah, I kind of had an act then. I I went out to, to to California for a vacation for two weeks and ended up staying there forever because I got dropped off. We got in a big fight with the people we went out there with. Uh, they were mescaline they... at with peyote buds. <laughs> we went, we went through the desert looking for peyote because I just read Carlos Castaneda, right. right? So I wanted to try peyote. Oh, but bad. and you just yeah. went to the so desert just, trying to I find just it. Went to the desert to try to find it. <laughs> And we did. We found an old Indian, just like in the book, this old Indian guy with no teeth, and he had it. And uh, But th it made us fight, and we got split up, and they left us on the side of the road with two 10-speed bikes, and they went back to Detroit. That's just like right out of Castaneda. Yeah. So right? I and then you wake up out of a kind of a drug-induced coma, and, and he's leader, standing over you I was la the leader laughing. of a motorcycle gang. I woke up, and <laughs> I was the leader of a motorcycle gang. That was it, huh? No. I was a street performer. I became a street performer. And who did you ever street perform? Yes, I did. My my teacher was uh, Jeff Sheridan in New York. Jeff Sheridan, uh, Jeff the, Sheridan. the guy with that the, the he, fire hot, the fire hat. No, no, no. That's no, no, Tony, Tony Vera. That's Tony Vera. Or, Tony, I knew him when he was Tony Echeverria, the fireman. Yeah. No, um, uh, Jeff Sheridan wrote the book Street Magic. Okay, all right. Uh, yeah, he yeah, was yeah, the yeah, tall, yeah. good-looking guy so in the where black did you work? outfit. I worked at theater district at, at intermissions. Yeah. You know that that game? Yeah. They they all used it, to I break the for theater intermissions. Yeah. And there would be this flood of people out there and you'd catch them during theater intermission. You'd have a short show and you know, and they all had money. Then they were all there. Because right. everybody smoked back then. Yeah. That was a great crowd. That was a great so crowd. So I looked, worked a lot in the uh Times Square area and so, not so much in Central Park. That was really Jeff's territory. Yeah. Who Tony worked in where did he work? He in? worked in Washington Square Washington Park. Square Park. There's a book right. on that called oh, Circle in the Square. Yeah. Circle in the Square. He was one of the top acts there, and he actually got in the New York Post, like on like the cover of page four. I forget what it was. For he was mugged, but he turned around and produced a peering cane, and the muggers uh, fled. Yeah, right. And it was magician thwarts crime with magic. I think and it was right around the time of that whole like the magician with Bill Bixby right. time. 
That's so, what yeah. got me going. That that show is that what got you going? Yeah, you're I love the you're Bill only, Bixby. You're a year younger Bixby. than I did, so we probably paralleled a lot of the same uh, shows on TV. Yep. The Bix, Bill Bixby was a big one. Bill Bixby was yeah. the magician. Yeah, that he was had a car with the license plates on it. Spirit, Spirit. Ooh, what white. was it? A Corvette, I think. Corvette, and, and that's what oh. you, Lance drives. Who drives that? He and Lance put that in his show. He had that white Corvette in the show. Yeah. Right. He had, yeah. That's what Lance had. White Corvette in the show. Yeah. So, is it, what was that? What was that? That's was it, the music. That's the theme song. I don't remember that. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's just creepy. <laughs> don't keep doing that. Stuff. Is that like a segue music in, in between scenes? Yeah. All right. So do that every time we change subjects. Okay. <laughs> if anybody knows. <laughs> So yeah, you got this at a church raffle. Yeah, yeah. God, I don't think I don't. That? Yeah, the, the priest was using it for a while to accentuate his sermon. There's some good ones on there, though. There really are some. Good, they're ones that make me blush. <laughs> I bet it's so. It's such a wholesome looking little 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 toy. Little so toy. on the streets, when you were on the streets, uh, what, what what material were you doing on the streets? I was doing well. Honestly, I was. Doing a lot of Jeff Sheridan style inspired uh, magic. See, that's he what was I my, did. Uh, yeah, I did the same with Harry Anderson. He was my teacher on the street. Yeah, and I stole Harry's act, <laughs> and I felt bad about it for years. No, didn't I he, even wore glasses when I didn't need to wear them? And didn't he actually steal your stuff once when you no, went to get his? Yeah, he took my stuff down. I went to go eat a sandwich real quick across the street, and he packed all my stuff up, in the in real way, and sat his stuff up, and I, it came back, and here he's in my spot doing his show. I'm like, or, or were you ah, in his spot? Uh, no, he just wanted to show me. He wanted to teach me a lesson. Uh huh. Because within five minutes, he had a hundred people standing there. Oh yeah. You know, I had like maybe twenty uh -huh. or thirty, and he he had the whole thing. And I just I, first I was going to kick his ass, and then I saw the crowd and went, "Wow, he's <laughs> this guy's good." And he was only doing sidewalk shuffle that trick. You mm -hmm. know, that he would do the little patter with the press, but he was good, man. He was he took me under his wing a little bit and showed me how to do it and what not to do, and uh, basically and everything I was doing. Uh, was but I did. I, you steal from your heroes, and then you then you slowly, make it your own. Yeah, yeah, you make it your own. And, but, but but for years I felt guilty about it because it took me a couple years to phase that all out. Of course it know? does. But you know, in the learning process, because we we you know we have the magic school, the magic and mystery school here in Las Vegas, and we know that you have to learn the basics and you have to imitate before you innovate. You have to be able to like learn the scales. You know, if you're playing the piano and then learn how to play melodies and harmonies in order to, to then someday compose original tunes. You know, you don't just like, oh, I want to play piano. Here, write some original music. Yeah. You have to be able to, that's why to I, learn I the think craft. That's why I, I, learning music and reading music, they, they, a lot of those people don't know how to create music because they're going by the book. You know, the people that, that study notes and chords mm -hmm. can't improv a song as good as someone who plays by ear. You know, mm -hmm. I'd rather be one of those guys that can pick up and, and play by ear. I'm neither, though, so fuck that. <laughs> So when did you make the transition from going from streets to, to, to comedy clubs? Uh, the police took care of that for me. They <laughs> they were uh, they were telling me that my crowds were getting too big and going out into the streets, and I couldn't rein them in, and so they arrested me for obstruction, mm -hmm. and that's what that's what got me off the streets because they really came down on all the street performers. Uh, in New York, it wasn't like that. They you probably could. Well, no, it was really tough in New York because the the New York cops. Or we're, we're really tough on street performers unless you built a relationship uh, over years and years with them. They would See, just get you right out the of there. Businesses wanted us. us they, they thought of us as competition. They wanted us out. Mm -hmm. So they would talk to the police and bribe them to, to take us off. You know? mm -hmm. But the, the thing about uh, street performing now, there was just so, so many battles done here in Las Vegas over street performers' rights. And they won. Yeah, they absolutely won. Yeah, Street absolutely. performers now, what is the law? You can go out there and perform on the sidewalk? There's some restrictions, though. Uh, they like to think there is, but there's, there's less than a lot of the, uh, the, the landowners of Las Vegas would, 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 would like to know that the... The, what it was at the ACLU uh, came in here and got behind the street performers to defend their rights. The casinos and, were telling them that that was their property and you're not allowed to not. be on, on our property, yeah. but it wasn't their property. They were lying. Casinos lying. Imagine that. Boing. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Shocking. I Shocking know. revelation. You can always, they always used to say you could tell when a casino, head of a casino is lying 
to your face because his lips move. Mm -hmm. yeah. But there's a lot of folks here in town like Jungle Josh and Grendel, some of the other street performers that are really out there that have done a lot for just maintaining the, the sovereignty of the street performer here in Las Vegas. And Let's taking... not forget about the Power Rangers and all the other... <laughs> oh, <laughs> the costume characters? Yeah, yeah what's yeah. with that? People... Crack Spider-Man and all that? Yeah, they can they, they can build a costume and go out there and make a lot of money just from wearing a costume. Yeah. They don't have any skill. Except for Spider-Man does. So I saw him go up a, up a building, which I didn't know how he did it. But really? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. I'm like, really? I'm going to talk more about the CD side. Yep, no. Uh, well, come to so Wonderground and you can see it. The Wonderground. This is, Isn't this, it awesome? This is the, Wonderground's turned into a really an awesome project. Where's the first place you did, the first time you ever did the Wonderground? Oh, I remember. The Domes. That. Remember oh. the Dome I had? Was it we, Bob Rossi's? Wasn't that at the... Uh, at the uh, no, the no, no, no. We had been doing these parties at my warehouse I where I had a dome. dome. Did yeah. you see the Dome? That was the Wonder Dome. And we'd have these parties just for our, our friends, you know, the magic community and our, you know, art community. And then we would, uh, when... I got my show opened at Palace Station. We decided to let's try it there for the public, and it got really popular. Got more, it was more popular than my show, because what you. Vegas did not need was another solo magician magic show. It had enough of them. You yeah, know what I mean? It did, but it didn't have you. I mean, it didn't no. have. It didn't know the difference between. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it, the the punter doesn't know the difference between right. a, you know between a Penn and Teller and you know Wyrick. You know, well maybe they do. <laughs> That's a better Wyrick. Okay, Weirich, amazing Jonathan and Weirich. Weirich's best review was, when, when Steve Weirich came on stage, it's like somebody left the room. That's what the review said. <laughs> well, regardless, there was enough of that going on, but there, we wanted to ha host a magic party for the magic community and where we could do new stuff and invite friends to the stage and have people drop in. It's great. It's like, it's kind of like a, a Lollapalooza kind of a deal set up. kind it's of got, Burning Man meets the Magic yeah, Castle. It's, 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 it's got an eclectic... Without it's the got sands. belly dancers, it's got artists, it's got magicians, it's got jugglers. Fakirs. Fakirs. Let's not forget Fakirs. I yeah. think, oh, the Swing Shift Sideshow was yeah. in that. They, they were there. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and totally rocked it. And people come from all over the world. Bizarro. When they're in town, when they're in town they want Bizarro, to... when he's not creating, he's there. He's there. When he's not creating. He's when always he's not creating. creating. Oh, well, see, so he has to show off the new things. Yeah. This is where we get to see the new stuff. Yeah, I, I love the stuff he comes up with. Dan Sperry shows up there. Yeah, Rudy Kobe he's, shows he's a up hack. there. He's a hack too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just hack. You name two hacks. Yeah. Why don't you name the ones that are good? Yeah. All right. I'm kidding. Who do you want to see there? I want to Who see everybody see? but Dan Sperry and the two you just named, Rudy Kobe. <laughs> Rudy Kobe. We, you know, we got Johnny Thompson coming in. You like Johnny? I he's been Johnny. on your show. Yeah. Right, yeah. Paul V. Hill. You like Paul? Yeah, I like all the acts, there, but I don't like the two you just. Mentioned. Okay, <laughs> okay. Well, uh, you probably reasons. have a history. No, I don't okay. have a history. It's get just a, get a Rudy paintball. Kobe. I just I know where everything he's what he's doing. I know I'm on to him. Let's put it that. Okay, way. you're I'm on. on to him. Okay, aren't you on to him? We were Are born in the same room. You and Rudy? Oh, absolutely. You know what? He was copying you. You were the one who thought of that. I know. And he took that idea. <laughs> He was being bored in the same room. He was in, in another cro hospital across town, yeah. and he found out you were, and he said, "I want to be there." Bored in that kind of like what he did with the with the guy that was what's that Robert Gallup? Kind of what he did with his para parachuting out of a cage thing. Boy, you hold a grudge. Oh, huh? no. you you're holding another person's grudge. I am. I this do. This is crazy. Because I like Robert Gallup. I was with him when he came up with the idea, and I was with him when he was formulating the plan. And then Rudy goes and steals the 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 whole routine, and Robert calls him up on it. Takes a video camera. Oh, I saw the video. To the flight school. Oh, it's so good. That was so good. All right. I like to stay out of the politics of magic, though, but that one's hard to stay out of. Hard to stay <laughs> out. Yeah, that's, that's like early mm. 90s stuff, isn't it? Yeah. Let it go. Let okay. it go. Let it go. <laughs> no, Rudy, Rudy is nice to me. I'm right. I, mean, I caught him stealing my psychic bit, word for word. He was doing the, the scissors in the head with the psychic lemon in there. He was doing it in Detroit at the Fox Theater, which we mentioned, and I called him up and said, hey, Rudy, you're doing my uh, psychic, psychic crown routine, Aaron. Oh, I've changed it around a little. I don't use a lemon. I use an orange. Oh. Oh. Go, <laughs> go to a happy do? place. Let yeah, it go. Let yeah. it go. Let uh, it go. Zen. Zen, so, zen, okay. zen. So the Wonderground is a great project, and uh, it, we change the show every month. Mm -hmm. And you hang out there once in a while. I did until Chris Angel started showing up. Well, I thought you guys were buddies. We are. We are. We are. We were best friends. you guys were buddies. We You'd hang friends. out and do the muscle car mm -hmm. thing together. Yeah, we, we, we would always boom, be. Boom, we would do everything boom. together. We were like... Two peas in a pod. I know you were doing his television show. Yes, I was. And you were doing 
pranks and punks. And then and... he stopped having me on. So not, no, that's not why. It's a, it's a, it's a whole thing where I got in a car accident. He went in for a hernia operation. And I called him to make sure he was all right. That's good. You're a caring yeah. person. I almost died in a car accident. I don't hear from him at all. Not at all. Not a call. Maybe he has a fear of death. I don't know, but I mean, your death. <laughs> yeah, I think it was most likely he was busy with his uh, camera tricks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, be nice. I like Chris. See, yeah, I do like Chris. Is it, I won't talk to him until he re- recognizes the fact of what he did. You know, I don't think I should be the one giving in to uh, there's certain things that you expect out of a best friend. Yeah, uh, a phone best call friend. during a car accident would be a nice thing. You know, how you doing? And I hear you're not walking for three months, you know. Wow. Why haven't I seen you around? Something, anything. Hard. Copperfield, he sends me brownies. <laughs> I don't even hang with Copperfield. Sends but he sent you, that's sweet. Yeah, he's sweet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He did, well, yeah. I, well, I try to bring people together. That's what you I do, try to you, do. You do. You, you, are, you, are, bring... you are known as being one of the nicest guys in, in the business. What am you? I doing on this show? What am I? What am I doing on this show? There goes well, this, my senatorial nomination. Let me just tell you what you're doing. Gone, right? Gone. Let Let's, me tell you what you're doing on this show. Your, your career reaches a certain level. <laughs> <laughs> then you start doing podcasts. <laughs> it's not on the way up. Uh-huh. It's kind of when you're sliding down. <laughs> Is no. this what's going on here? No, no, no. no it's this going Everyone's on. Everyone's doing. Why aren't you doing a podcast? You do I a do podcast. Mystery School Monday. Yeah, we have. Viewers in seventy-eight countries around the world. We've been running s- for three, three years. We have over two hundred hours about of episodes. Will you do it? Well, give me, give me a scenario. I, I hear banging drug, drums in the woods. That's what I hear about mystery school. No, it's not at all. The no, 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 what no, is, no. That's what I hear about. They bang drug, drums in you the woods. You know, any, any, any great idea. Schopenhauer said any great idea goes through three stages. When mystery school started, a lot of people made fun of it. But that Schopenhauer says. Great, great ideas are first laughed at of uh, being totally ridiculous. Secondly, they're violently opposed, and third, they're embraced as self-evident truth. So where are you so, at? So we're we're at number three because we've been now at the mystery school nearly twenty-five years. Nearly twenty-five years. Names, it's the top magic names school that in the world. names that have gone to mystery school that people would know, magicians would know. Okay, the guy that's on the new illusionist tour, Aaron Crow. I put, uh, he's the, the, the samurai guy. He's really big in Europe, mm-hmm. and he's the warrior in the show, and he came to Mystery School. I put two acts together with him, and Luna. he's on all, all, all of the d- different uh, t- television shows for Uri Geller. He won all of those things. So he's one of the top. Um, Luna Shimano? Luna, Luna, Luna was. She's been on the show. She's been on. Uh, Romani, uh, who is the first woman magician to ever win the Magician of the Year from the Magic Circle, and she's going to be competing. Oh, no, no, yeah, she's she? she's from she's from London. Mm-hmm. Matthew Wright, another FISM Award winner. I know Romani. I know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. the English girl. She's yeah. fabulous. Totally yeah. fabulous. You know, I mean, these are magicians, magicians that the magicians know. Not maybe the 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 public doesn't know so much. But Jason Andrews, you've seen Jason yeah. Andrews. Has mm-hmm. he been on the show? No. Yeah, I'm on the show. He's great. He's great. We have him at Wonderground a lot. So there's yeah yeah. <laughs> Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, have you ever spent time with Eugene Berger? He's one of the great wizards, you know? He's, he's been my teacher for years. I've never spent time with him, Yeah, he's but he always looks... He said, Eugene Berger's intimidating to approach. Yeah, but he's not. I know, but once you but, get to know him, I know he's Yeah, he's there. great. He's a pussy um, cat, really. I know. I've seen him work a million times, and I, it's like one of these things... That, he's like Jeff Ross to me. Every time I see Jeff Ross... You know the comic? Mm-hmm. He's always really funny. Hi, and I'm always afraid to approach certain people. Because Eugene Berger is one of those. Jeff Ross. There's certain people that have this unapproachable aura. thing. Yeah, or? just like I don't know if it's going to be if I approach them, if what to say. I don't know what to say. It's great. What You're do you say love to Eugene when you? Because I don't know. You got to talk magic with him. You got to do. No, you can talk anything with Eugene. He's really? very well versed. Yeah, you can tell. T- he t- looks t- like a nice guy. Yeah, yeah. you could tell. You could t- tell him your, some of your dirty jokes. He'd laugh. Yeah, he, he likes that. that. Yeah, he's got the. Seedy he likes side. a good. He's got a good. He likes like the seedy, seedy side. side. Yeah, you're trying to do what? Is this is called burn unit. The seedy side. Yeah. Now, why do why do you call it burn unit? I don't know. I wanted to go home early. <laughs> the web names of everything cool was taken already. I couldn't get burn. I couldn't get anything dot com. You can't get anything dot com. Burn anymore. unit. Now you can get something edu or. TV. Does anybody know why he calls it burn unit? Nobody. Because it's about this. It's about 
someone telling me what they're doing. Like, like and then, then you burning them? No, no, go ahead. <laughs> start talking to me about something you're passionate about. Well, you see, there's this great charity. That, oh, you do that? Well, I, just, this, I try to burn them. Burn, yeah. You burn the gas, they try to burn me. And for a while, everybody, every time somebody got burned, we were yelling burn unit, but that kind of went away. I don't know. It's a good name. And, and you ever been to a burn unit? It's funny if you've ever been to a burn unit. <laughs> it's just like a place where people are slapping in selvedine. Yeah, that's so cool. <laughs> you just go and you... Oh, oh that's man. just... <laughs> <laughs> wow, I've been to Burning Man, but not to What's your favorite Burning book? Union. What's my favorite book? Uh, recent, the Art of Worldly Wisdom by Balthazar Gracian. Oh, yeah, that one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you I have, couldn't put it down. I'm sure you have many of your viewers well, out there that yeah. may have walked past that book. All right, that's one. <laughs> name another book. Name another book that I'm fond of. Well, name, uh, name a nonfiction, or uh, name a fiction book, or something that... Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, the like the Deptford Trilogy it. by Robertson Davies. And what's that? It's a trilogy about um, uh, a young man who has an opportunity to travel with a magician. Around around the world and his adventure. And there's three books. And there's three books. All right. All right. There's Fifth out. Business, The Manticore, and World of Wonders. All right. And these books have influenced me. They were great. And, and Robertson Davies, one of the great Canadian writers. What great Canadian writers? Yeah. A. Right. A. You know, it's, you know, if you like great Canadian can, writers, he's this, one of them. Doesn't yeah. come, doesn't sound right. Great Canadian writer. He's a great Canadian Somewhere. writer. Eh? Yo, got you. So, betcha. what is your favorite movie? What is my favorite movie? Let's do first comedy. Oh, com my what movie made you laugh harder than any other movie? Uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Yeah, you ever uh, tried, easily. You ever easily. tried showing that movie to a kid now? Uh, somebody like a niece or a nephew or anything? It, uh, no. Do, they, do they laugh it, it, or not? You're laughing. No, and... it falls dead with the kids, man. It falls flat. Really? Yeah, and I, I, I that movie kills me. That's one of my favorites. Yeah. I was watching them watching, going. Yeah, I see what I can see why they see it's not funny. It's mm -hmm. really silly to these kids nowadays. Mm -hmm. It's really silly, mm -hmm. but it is. A and one of my favorite movies movie. I, I watched it recently, uh, Cabaret. Yeah, you know, with Joel Gray and Liza Minnelli. I watched that movie. Every scene is perfect. Yeah, and it really influenced. You know, that's what I kind of want Wonderground to be, is to have that feel. Well, she was beautiful in that movie. Oh, was unbelievable! I'm talking about Joel Gray. <laughs> The white face, yeah. right? Joe, the Joel Gray, the white face thing, oh, the MC, yeah. the nightclub. White face, the, that, that all did. You did white face. Oh, I up, did white up. face. You did white face. You got to show that spell. picture. I did God's spell, yeah. You were like, yeah, you were, yeah, I, we yeah. totally had the same look at the same I time. Did. I know. You were we doing did. that. Only well, you rocked it, and I fucking bombed miserably. <laughs> <laughs> you rocked that mime look. Yeah. I was I actually, did. did mime on the street for two or three days. I actually met a mime in San Francisco that talked me into doing it. I, all you have to do is follow people and be imitate them as they're walking. That's all you have to do. You don't even need this. But crap. you can get real beat up doing that. Yeah, you can. Yeah, but, but somebody but, turns around and they see uh, you're mocking them. That, that's, I've seen I've seen mimes belted, thrown yeah. in the fountain. I saw <laughs> See, I'm not good at it. I get caught. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> I get caught. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Yeah, I thought mimes were pretty cool. Until, That's a mime. I, I saw, I saw, I, mum, <laughs> I saw you just making. <laughs> I saw mum and chance. I can't. You, we can't. We can't do that mum game because you're just gonna win. This is like your thing. <laughs> you're like thing? you. Well, what are you talking about? I throw cards. You're like this with Look, the fingers. You hit the cut the horse. Uh, I. <laughs> <laughs> The burn unit. <laughs> uh, did you? you ever oh, let me get that? that. No, let me get that. Let me. Can I get moment, moment, moment. No, you're gonna do this. To me. You, <laughs> yeah. Oh, you were. Oh, gonna do that yes. To me. Oh, yes. Uh, oh, yes. Do you remember Moment Chance? Oh, yes, I do. I knew Bernie Shirch. He was a friend of mine. I saw. <laughs> I saw Moment Chance, and I saw. That would be uh, so ironic if I heard the swings of shine show with the card. Like know, they're like the poking they swords through their body, and they, ah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and, they, and they hit Wouldn't a nerve or something that, yeah, that like made him so he couldn't walk anymore. Ever, He's, ever. Oh, my God. All the shit That he would does. be totally ironic, wouldn't it? He hangs from his face with three hooks but can't take a cart <laughs> in the eye. Yeah, that, that would be his bad. His cheek where his nerves are. <laughs> Bell's, Bell's, Bell syndrome. <laughs> Hi, Andrew. Hi. <laughs> Get any work yet? Not yet. <laughs> can't figure out why. <laughs> Woo. Gotta take these hooks and pull my face to the other side. <laughs> wow. wow. Strong. You ever wonder if, if you had a stroke, how you do your show? You ever think about that? I think I'd become a mentalist. 
a it's mentalist? Just, I'm just a mentalist. I often think about how could I do my show? What's the worst? You thing? often think about this? If you did what I did, you would often think about it too. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that everyone in my house has to be trained with CPR tells you a lot. Um, no, <laughs> yeah, the fact that my 12 year old daughter knows how to revive my heart says a lot. But yeah, I, I often wonder how far I could go and still get laughs. How far could you go with still throwing cards? You know, could you do it like this? <laughs> Would it be as impressive? <laughs> You couldn't really strike the magic pose anymore. <laughs> You'd have to wear your mask and stay, keep it on. <laughs> he won't take his mask off anymore. It'd be like, Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> He's got a slot cut in his mask. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Here's Jeff. Having stroke, throwing cards. <laughs> That's him at home. First, he, didn't, he couldn't do anything at first. Then he worked on it. <laughs> it's a documentary. <laughs> wow. And you, you stay up night thinking about how you can do your I don't stay up late. I don't go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't stay up. People go, do you stay up late at night? No. I stay up early in the morning <laughs> and go to bed late at night. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So uh, you never went through the, the drugs and the, uh, the sex, drugs, and rock and roll, have you? Wow. <laughs> well... <laughs> Now that you mention it, you did go through it, so you didn't parallel me all the way. I, I was, you know, tracking. I was your maybe career. like you were kind of like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd like the yeah. I, I was, was the high one. Your boy, yeah, you were. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, wrote, we, we learned wrote, from your example early on. No, I, well, you know what? I wrote all my, my material in it. I mean, I would stay up and write for days and just write. My, I wouldn't even. My hand would just go by itself. You know, and sometimes it was legible. You know, I was just talking over here. Would it still material. be funny when you came to, like some a week it, later? Some of it would be. Some of it would spark an idea of, but I was, when that idea got sparked, I was still high. So it was like, it wasn't like I came down, read the notes, and went, hmm, I want to put that together. And no, I just stayed up there, you know. <laughs> so I wrote it, I performed it, and I didn't do anything for years and years. No, I would, because of the type of stuff I do, I made a rule with myself. I would never perform high. I would oh, never, yeah. you know, See, alter I don't before get show. high. I don't get high. You stay high. No, I don't stay high. I don't, <laughs> I don't do drugs that make you high. I make do drugs that make you focus. I don't like sloppy. I don't drink. I've never drank. I've never done any drug that made me other than what you're looking at now. Look What's the face. maddest you've been like in public for a situation maddest like that? Maddest I've yeah. been. Like you almost fighting. Almost fighting. Oh, almost almost fighting. Or something that brings you out of your Zen state of McBride. Oh, that's the Zen yeah. state of McBride. Something that make you leave that. Yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to, to, to Maybe to, it's your wife, maybe it's Abby. Oh. <laughs> Maybe it's you right now. No, Push me yeah. to the edge. <laughs> right? Push you just, I'm trying to show too, you where I live. A little too far, yeah. I'm just trying to show you where <laughs> yeah. I live. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, uh, probably, probably, probably the thing that pisses me off is people doing shit behind my back. Yeah. Look, you know what I mean? Do yeah, doing yeah. You know, just conference. like, they, you can just like, come I'm over, I'm going to do a show, it'll be nice, we'll talk about your magic school. No. Uh, we'll talk about we your did. Yeah, yeah, like uh, for a second. All right, let's talk yeah, about and, your and, and then and then it's like you know it's like doing stuff behind my back. You started. It's okay. I, I did. I did. All I right. Did. So <laughs> let's talk about your. Let's not, not talk about your magic school. No, not we already now. Have. It's not sincere. I want to talk about other stuff that you've done. I want to show. Would you show me a card trick? If someone says Jeff, show me a card trick. What's the card. The, the card trick that I'll do first is this. That's the. You card know, trick I've seen I'm that a million do. times, but I don't I know how it's done. Yeah. Show well, me how it's done. <laughs> <laughs> I said, seriously, I don't. I'm going to try to do it. Can I try to do it? <laughs> I've seen people do it. I've never tried to Isn't do it. Isn't it great? No, because I you, choke every time I throw it. Yeah, you do. You could do. You could. I don't want to get them back so hurt far. Yourself. I've you got them back. Yourself. I've got half the deck down here. Yeah, you just regurgitate. I don't know. Regurgitate. <laughs> yeah, it'd be very evil to tell people how to do a trick wrong. Well, you have to Magic school, you could do that and videotape it. You have to push the deck down farther. Push the deck down farther. You have these little sixteen-year-olds. <laughs> What's one of the great things now is that they're putting on these fake magic explanations on the internet. Now. I know. They're, it's those great. Little, I love fake bullshit on the internet. It's so good. Opening. Rick a Lax has been doing that. Is he? Yeah. Rick Lax. Opening has been a doing car that. door with a tennis ball was the brilliant one, man. I haven't seen oh, it. Oh, they said they had these people open. Show you cut a hole in a tennis ball and put it up to the lock and hit it, and the suction opens the locks. It moves, 
and they were showing people doing it, and it was all, every one of them was fake. Everyone, oh, good. They got me out there with a tennis ball. I was so happy to learn it was fake, and that they got me out Did there. Did they really? I cut a hole in a tennis ball. And you were out yeah, there trying to open your car doors? Yeah. You have the keys, guy. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. There's a vet. I've got 26 cars all pinned in by one Corvette that doesn't have keys anymore because I lost them last week. Well, I, just say, I think that's one of the things about the internet is like there's so much internet exposure with magic, and I think it's great that people are kind of doing the, the kind of using it against them yeah you know? i love the pre the fake stuff it's great and uh -huh. the guy walking the people running on the top of the water uh -huh. did you see that one uh -huh. they claim they can run on top of water they get like seven steps and then uh -huh. fall, fall in i love they it. just find a nice shallow little pool that has a drop off uh -huh. and they get that was it looks so real man it uh -huh. looks so good man you I've, should you should do one of those you got to do i, I want to i want something to go viral you ever have anything go viral uh well there was that uh, on the back internet <laughs> Not yet. No. Not yet. How about you? No, no, no. Not Perhaps the show. Yeah. <laughs> this episode. This maybe. episode. <laughs> um, I want something. I, I always think of it. It's like, you know what it is? It's like the old days when you had to do publicity stunts to get people to come to your theater. Right. They, people knew how to do those. Right. That's a lost art, doing mm -hmm. publicity stunts. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to do. You walk a fine line when you do something like that because you can get arrested for it. Or Have you ever done a well, publicity stunt? That's f f yeah, I, I, I certainly did. I did Burned Alive, for, you know, for t on television. I did that in Monte Carlo. It was a big publicity stunt. And then you made it look like it went tragically wrong, and people were thunk thinking. Well, no, it it, it 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 looked like I got consumed in the flames. This was for ABC. But you were doing a magic special. Yeah, it was a magic special. I mean, did special. you ever do something to promote like a prank or something? <clears throat> something to promote an appearance. Some, I had a guy in Scotland come up with an idea for me once, and I said, no, that's not going to work, and well, I, I don't want to do it. And he talked me into doing it. And it Made all the papers in three countries that make papers. I, I did one. What, what was your thing? I, he told me to take a rubber tongue and stick it on the fence of oh, the Edinburgh Castle. You know, they have those spike uh -huh. fences. And pretend like I was caught on the fence with my tongue and call the fire. We called the fire department and they showed up and they tried to remove me from the spike. And wow, they that's thought great. it was real. And, and I was screaming and yelling and then they found out it was fake and they didn't get mad, thank God. But it made all the papers when that when people were thinking it was real. You know, you know I did a thing. I, 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 we created a school for fire eaters, which got where I was working with a press agent, and we were trying to get aid uh, attention to this club I was working in New York City in 1979 called the Club Ibis. So they said, "Oh, what's going to do it?" And, and, and so we said we were giving fire eating lessons to people of all walks of life to overcome their fear of fire and, and power. And so we did a, a whole. School of fire eating, yeah, and that brought everybody's See, attention. So certain things that you can do. Oh, and I'm on knows. a talk show. I'm Jim on knows. a talk show promoting it. Yeah, and I make a torch out of wire, which I should not have done, and I'm teaching the talk show host. That's how everybody's watching this. All the kids on this is on TV, and the guy is supposed to, sh and he and the metal gets too hot. Oh, wire, yeah. right. And it's only a, like a little tiny torch, but I used wire instead oh, of string. Burned himself. And it goes, and you could hear the metal sinking in uh, to the lip, and you can, and now I can see the white, because when you yeah, get a lip you, burn, yeah, it's white. Your tongue too, and yeah. then I see him try to move the torch, and it's like, oh, and then the then the skin peel off. Oh, I seen that guy do the tonight on the news. Well, <laughs> I seen. <laughs> oh. It was uh, it was crazy. Uh, that's we yeah, have. That's just going. Have you ever to, have you ever heard anybody during your show? Oh yeah, I've 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 done <laughs> blowouts and set people on fire. Oh, yeah. You know? Oh yeah. Let's hear about some of these. Yeah. Like then these, the, then these. there was the, the 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 torch through the arm, and I thought it would be cute that day to use a sparkler, which the heat is like a million degrees, <laughs> and I get the girl up on stage, and I'm doing the torch through her arm with the sparkler because it's like summertime, and yeah. I had a sparkler. And when I and this is a person from the audience that I do it on. Yeah. I've never rehearsed, and I take the thing off, and the woman's skin is shredded, oh, hanging off. It's more like magnesium through her. I was just like, <laughs> I've had some like terrible things go wrong. Tell me more. I like this. Oh, it makes me it puts me more in my league. I love this. Yeah. Well, here's one. Yeah. Here's one. It's like, um, about maybe 16 years old. I'm going through my kiss phase. And the band, right? Not yeah, yeah. They're people. not just grabbing people at random. I'm doing an outdoor fair, and I have this trick where I produce a dove, and then uh, for, I, I take I produce a mouth coil, the paper from the mouth, and cut off the little piece, and then change the pieces of paper in a tube to a streamer and a dove, and then I put the dove in a little box as I take out an extra bag, and then I take the dove, 
and put it in the paper bag, blow up the paper bag and pop it and little feathers come down. That's how it went almost every day except this one day where I'm pulling out the paper and I take those those scissors, those Fisher scissors, oh, no. and I go like this and I cut off the entire I, uh, inside of my lip. It's gone. And I go, I'm quick thinking and I go like this. And you know how you and I hit, running in your mouth. Oh yeah, it's just feel and you know how you check yourself if you get cut shaving yeah. or you oh, oh and it's bad. Yeah. So I'm I'm kinda of, oh, this is really bad. Oh. And I'm changing the paper into the streamer and I finish the bird and I'm kinda of hiding and swallowing. The red bird. Not yet. <laughs> and then I put the bird in the little box for the switcheroo, because I have to switch it for a non real bird that's right. kind of rubber without giving too much away. And uh, now I take the paper bag, which has feathers in it, and I take the bird, and I take the bird, and I put the bird in the bag, and now I have to blow up the bag. Oh. And I figured this would be a great time. So, oh. And I'm just putting all of what's been in my mouth for the last three minutes into this bag, kind of, do one of those to, oh my God. And now I have to go oh into the no. finale. Pop it. Boom, and blood <laughs> everywhere and bloody feathers and children are screaming and mothers are cussing and I'm like dripping blood. And it's like Ozzy Osbourne, it's like kiss, it's all, it's just, and now I have to introduce the next act. And I'm saying, thank you very much. I'm Jeff McBride, and that stuff is just oh, pouring down my chest. Uh, and then could please enjoy the, the Sharpshooter and Marksman Paul Lacrosse brought to you courtesy of Bear Archery and the Orange County Fair. Thank you, and good night. Yeah. yeah. You can't get that to stop bleeding until it wants to stop bleeding, man. Oh, do those lip cuts, they're yeah, bad. Yeah, I got one, too. We're doing the, the scissors through the rubber tongue. I sliced, oh, oh, I sliced oh, oh. my lip, and the blood, same thing. But I... And everybody thinks it's part of the act. Mm, yeah, me, me, they do. <laughs> Someone like doing theatrical magic like you. Know, it was at the end of the show. Was it? Oh, but I was dressed me, for it. I was dressed. I for will it. never get help if I'm if I'm on fire on stage. No one will come out and help me. No more. Because it's part of the show, you know. Yeah. But uh, I put that liquid skin on my lip during intermission. This is in Texas. You were at that one of those shows, uh, that theater. Remember, four star. But the bubble it made it created a blood bubble. That liquid skin, I saw it getting bigger and bigger, and I could see it. I was talking like this. I could see this bubble getting bigger. It was filling with blood. Did it ever pop, the blood bubble? Um, I, no, I didn't want it to pop. I knew it would have been like you hitting the bag. Uh, it, would, it, it, would, it got big, though. It got embarrassingly big. People know... I had, oh, man, I remember this. I was on doing a show at the Landfield Avenue Synagogue. And I Wait was doing this Landfill trick. Landfill Avenue Synagogue? Landfield. La, yeah. The, the, synagogue. Yeah, Landfill, synagogue. Landfill and synagogue yeah, in the yeah. same sentence. Landfield, but that's La, okay. Okay, Landfill. I like Landfill, though. Landfill. Yeah. And I'm doing a trick where you pour the, I kind of made it up because I read a magic catalog and I didn't have the money to buy the actual trick, so I made this my own version. This was last year, folks. Yeah. <laughs> 1973. So I, I pour the water in the can and you put the, the, the little paper on it, you set it on the kid's head and pull the paper out, right. and then you show that there's uh, no water because now they have water on the brain. Ha ha, that was the big joke. Goodness so God. now I have one of these fake funnels, and, uh, not funnels, uh, funnels. Fu uh, no, 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 uh, the faucet, the little trick faucet that you bought in the gag shop right. that you could fill with suction water. Cup. Right, with the suction cup. So I put the suction cup on the kid's head, all is great. I turn on the faucet, the water is pouring out, it's filling the cup, it's filling the cup, everybody's laughing, and Okay, and now I go to pull the suction cup up. The kid goes, oh, my stitches, my stitches, oh, my no. stitches. I had picked the one kid in the world that had hairline Frankenstein stitches across the top of his head, and I'm yanking off this funnel, and it's just like. Oh, my God. Yeah. Why yep. did you these were my early shows, and you thought you had bad shows. Well, I probably did wanted, you tell him the I story probably of your one first gave show? the stitches to that kid. He probably did <laughs> yeah. my show first. <laughs> you threw a card at him. <laughs> did you ever tell the story about your God spell act? No, no, no yeah, I have. Yeah, you have. Yeah, I have. It's uh, good. Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, it's good. It's the, just... the night I bombed in front of everybody. Yeah, that's that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. tragedy plus time equals comedy. Magic formula, right? Yeah, I didn't have a lot of good magic shows. When I was a professional magician, my, my luck had 
pretty much run out. I was, it's not a lack of practice. This is, birds could always get out of whatever harness I put them in. You so know? Tell me more about this. <laughs> uh, this is, Bizarre said this is kind of a therapy yeah, show. Sit back is. and tell me more about this show. It seems I knew, to have something. I, How did you feel about your parents? You know what? It's when I didn't want to do magic, and I wasn't doing magic, that I got good at magic. I actually keep, did you get, get I, good I, at any I do. magic? I keep up. I keep up with you magic. Do. Yeah. You do. You do. You were showing me some stuff I the other day. You fooled me. I show up everyone. Everything I pick to show magicians generally fools them because mm -hmm. they haven't seen it before. Mm -hmm. Like the like the Bermuda Triangle sugar pack trick I showed Copperfield and Johnny Thompson. Oh, is this Neither, with the numbers? Yeah, it was out it was of impossibilities by Jim Steinmeier. No, it's it's you make a square out of objects and you can move objects. Add. And Good objects, night. and they always tally up to the same number. Right, mm -hmm. and that one, no one had seen for some reason. Yeah, right. Uh, that's it. No, not a lot of people. Not do a it. lot of people know it. You could right. do it with people out in the field. It would be brilliant to do mm -hmm. it with, instead of coins. You did it with real people and just had them. Billy, I want you to move the pile. Number so ten. Who are the? I mean, you have Bizarro here. Who are the other people that that kind of fill you in with what's going on in the magic world? Um, or you just stay up late and surf the net. No, <laughs> one, that, that's the. That's exactly how I do it. I go on the internet and all these young punks. They're amazing now. The, the level of magic and the skill level is, uh -huh. is because of the internet right. is so intense, man. Mm -hmm. They they're so good. They're mm -hmm. like machines, you mm -hmm. know, like mm -hmm. Andre. And, oh, and, Andre's amazing. Yeah, just great. Uh, yeah. Do you like Do you like being on the road as opposed to just go yeah, doing okay, the Groundhog I'm doing, Day? I'm only doing a couple weekends a month. So if I complained about that, I'd be a dick, you know. How do you How do you complain about working three and a half hours a week? Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> you know. No, it's all right. It's fine. Mm -hmm. It's fine. I get to see the fans, and more fans out on the road than there are here. Uh, yeah, because yeah. they they all come that one show instead yeah. of being dispersed over. I like show after show after show. It's show. better than going to work every single night. Let me tell you that. I mean, did Did you ever put in the middle of your show just a, just magic without the comedy? No. <laughs> <laughs> never. 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 No, I don't. It doesn't. It would be like. Me putting a you joke. You coming in. out with clown shoes on at, during, after your car routine going, <laughs> you wouldn't do that. <laughs> no. <laughs> it doesn't, it would be like, eh, eh, eh. you know, you got to watch the line. If yeah. the line goes down and dips that much, you're doing something wrong. It's just fine with me because that involves, that involves practice. So mm -hmm. I'm glad I'm not doing that. You're always pushing, yeah. the, you're always pushing the edge, you know, you know, really pushing the edge. Have you ever yeah. just... Like I know you pushed it way too far I on occasion. I watch serious magic with a different wa way to watch it. When you say, I, how can I yeah, screw with or, this? Or they, they will fuck up, and I'll go, oh yeah, that's I'm doing that. You know, uh, that's great. I was watching a bird guy do a bird act, and I'm just going, what if they all died, and he still had to go through and produce dead doves, and they all. So I I wrote that. That was the last thing I wrote. I have like seven or eight doves that are bean bags, and they just flop. You know, they, they don't, there's nothing like the yeah, head of a dead no dove. No spine in them yeah. at all. They look like dead doves. You know, and you've I, seen it. We've seen this. Yeah. We've, you can tell that head just. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've killed a few real doves in my time, too. Have you killed a lot of doves? No. Really? Any? You no. know who killed a lot of doves? Gary Willette, our, one of our great, great friends who's now deceased, told me more stories about killing doves than I've ever heard in my life. He must have killed 30 birds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think that sound would get him hard or something. No. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's what they think. <laughs> <laughs> he does it good. I want you to do that during my show when I'm. But well, uh, yeah, I, have you ever pushed it too far on stage? Just like way too far yeah, on stage. Yeah. Oh yeah. When, where the it, audience it, just goes, whoa. No, where I hurt somebody. You know, oh. um, like I, I used to throw a butcher knife between a guy's feet, and it would stick right between his feet. I would gauge it, double check it. Without looking, and this and it, is because your vitamins in the morning mm -hmm. could always put you right on that mark. <laughs> no, I was accurate. I did it for the years, Th thirteen years. I did it before I hit someone's foot and pinned their boot, boot right to the ground. <laughs> yeah, baby blue cowboy boots. I remember the day like it was yesterday, and it stuck in his foot. And, and, and was it pinned to the floor? I asked him. I said, "Tell me that's going in between your toes, please." And he goes, "I think it's going in between my toes. I don't feel it." And I went. Can you move your foot? No, it's pinned to the ground. And I went, all right. Then I owe you some new boots. That's all. <laughs> so I bought him a new pair of boots, and we were fine with it. But man, that was lucky. And Did I broke. You still do I broke, that? Broke someone's arm. You broke someone's. Arm. Yeah, I broke someone's arm. I threw a fake machete into the audience, switching the real one for a fake meat cleaver, and threw. It has the same effect. The fake one has the same effect as a real one. It's kind of <laughs> stupid. If it hits somebody, it's going to knock their teeth out, just like a real one would. People are gonna dive out of the way like a, like they would for a real one, <laughs> and that's how he broke his arm diving over the table, get out of the way of it. 
And uh, wow, yeah. do you still do it? No, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not stupid. I'm not stupid. If it hurts no. somebody, I will stop. You know? <laughs> Until the audience should have a safe word. What are you doing? Na- <laughs> what? <laughs> What are you doing now until you stop? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing now. Oh, full balls to the wall now. Wow. No, yeah, I've, I've done a lot of stupid things. I used to shoot arrows, fake arrows in the audience. and watch. I, I like people diving out of the way of things. I like to see there's a good sound to that where the chair is kind of tipping over and people go, eh. Man, I used to see the, the, the jugglers that do those hoop acts where they throw the hoops out to the audience and then the audience throws them back and they catch them on their neck. Yeah. I was in Monte Carlo, man. This guy throws this thing out to this table and wipes out the entire <laughs> table of glass wearing oh, drinks man. on the people's lap. How about Kozak, man? He had some bad luck with that kind of shit. The streamers from the hand coming out like Spider-Man into the candle. Oh, I did that <laughs> in Atlantic City. Did you? Opening for Tina Turner. I absolutely do that. I, they had the candles, the little yeah. tea lights on the table, and her opening song is putting out the fire with gasoline oh, by Bowie. Right, nah. and the band is behind because there's no because I'm working in one in front, and it's Jeff McBride, and then <laughs> putting out the fire with, and the curtains open, and the tablecloths are on fire. Oh my god! And they thought it was part of the show, and everything's I, I guess on it was. fire. <laughs> and I did it last year. I was up in Canada, and I throw a streamer out. Aren't they fireproof? No, they're paper. <laughs> but why don't why don't you tell them? Hey, I just had an incident. <laughs> yeah. And we had the well, I had the same thing happen. The, the when in the the, the I, what I did is I, I pulled the streamer back and it's a big fluffy and I put it on a bald guy's head like it's a wig and then he took it and set it down on the candle on the table. Oh, so his and fault. It, well, yeah, it was his <laughs> fault. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was his fault, officer. Yeah. But the, we had the so fi- you, fire you department also, there. Though. Did, you were also open for, um, um. Or, Diane, uh, Diana Ross. Diana Ross. Remember that her? A, that's huge. That was yeah. That Are you was allowed back to in the... look at her? Were you allowed to look at her? Is that uh, true? Yeah. Is that true? You, it is? Yeah, you can look at her. Okay, because I heard that. But you, you have to call her Miss Ross. Well, that's okay. That's respectful. But I'm not. You can't look at me. That's kind of pretentious, isn't it? I wasn't there for that day. It could have happened. I Maybe wasn't somebody there. was doing this to her all the time, <laughs> and she's like, "Stop looking at me like like that," and they got. Carried away with the rumor. Yeah, I find that most of the things they say about big stars like that are goofy rumors. She was great to work <coughs> with, and she put me in the in here <coughs> it, when I was at Caesar's Palace with her. She put me in the middle of her show. I wasn't her opening act. She would say, "You know, all those high rollers, they always come late for the show, and they'll miss you. So let me go out and deal with them, and I'll put you on the middle of the show so everybody sees you." Yeah, and she would take. A and how many shows did you do with her? Oh, I traveled with her for on and off for four years. And you got radio. You got to know her. Yeah. Again? Yeah, I worked. Because I worked with Gladys Knight and didn't for a year and never met her once. You're a different kind of guy. Yeah, um, you know what I mean. Yeah, I think she might have sensed senior act. Yeah, I guess the white hood thing was bad. Idea. <laughs> <laughs> joking, joking. <laughs> uh, Jeff, it's been great having you. We I could talk for hours with you and have and have and uh, but we have to wrap up and and ladies and gentlemen, this has been Burn Unit with our special guest Jeff McBride. I. Uh, I hope you had a great time watching it. And all the people that you don't know who we're talking about, look them up. Find out who we're talking about because it's worth it. And uh, we'll see you next week.